Hello again, everyone. This is Greg, your Cheese League Commissioner, here with another look at one of our teams of the Winter League Challenge. Today, we are looking at the Feta Flamers. Of course, they are sponsored by Feta. Great old cheese Feta is. Thank you so much to Big Cheese for sponsoring all of our teams. Um, Feta Flamers, it's a new team here in the uh, Winter League Challenge. Their home park is Red Rock Ballpark. Beautiful Red Rock ballpark. Reminds me of the Red Rocks out there in Arizona, where it's hot. So why not put the Flamers out there? Let's take a look here at their logo. We'll also take a look at the uniform, dig into the default lineup, and also go into the roster a little bit more to dig into the numbers. Feta Flamers. Um, like in the colors of the Flamers, like the FF, of course, for Feta Flamers. Flamers, like the little uh, fire there, reminds me of, what's that, Charmander, right, on, <laughs> on Pokemon or something? And you have a fire in the back of his tail? Something like that. Of course, Feta is displayed there. We've got Feta displayed here as well. Our sponsor, Feta. And Big Cheese. It's, this team's rocking actual, the old school, uh, looks like they're rocking the old school stirrups too, which is pretty, pretty sweet. I do enjoy the color scheme here of the Feta Flamers. That blue and the, uh, the red-orange is pretty sharp, I think. But that is how the Feta Flamers look. I think they're a pretty sharp-looking team. I do like the, the hat that they sport, too. Um, almost reminds me of uh, Miami Dolphins colors, almost. Good old Miami Dolphins. Back in the day, they were the team to beat. All right. I know nothing about football, so I'm going to talk about baseball instead. And this is fake baseball. Here we go. Let's take a look here at the Feta Flamers lineup. So this team is a balanced team. This is definitely not a team that, um, not like the Asiago Aeroplanes where they were bullpen beasts, not like the uh, Bree Boomerangs where they were power hitters. Um, more of a balanced, I would say more of a balanced lineup. Um, maybe less of a balanced um bullpen uh, and starting rotation, but we will take a look. Of course, we play with the DH in the Winter League Challenge. Uh, let's take a look into the batting batting order uh, for their default lineup with the DH on. Right up top, we have Ballstein Price, uh, their catcher uh, leading off, and rightfully so, he's a pretty good contact hitter. Maybe less than mid-range on power, pretty mid-range on speed, feeling, and arm. Uh, although he does have Steeler and Tough Out activated. So Steeler, I, I don't think I would see Boston Price run much, but we'll have to see if he does. Uh, Rose Bobbert is, well, let's see, Boston Price was a B-rated player, by the way. Uh, Rose Bobbert, Bobbert your A-minus uh, player here, definitely high on the power number, uh, maybe above mid-range on contact and speed. Very good on fielding an arm, your right fielder, so pretty darn good player all around here for Rose Bobbert. You can see why she is a uh, five-tool player here. Um, definitely see why she is number two in the ro in the starting uh, lineup. Uh, higher on speed um, and on contact as well. And right field as the left field is a secondary position. I thought it actually said first base there for a second, but it does not. Uh, Lalia Hogan is your A minus rated shortstop. So, so far, everybody's actually in their own positions, too, which is pretty interesting. It's not what we've seen with the uh, aeroplanes or the, uh, the boomerangs lineups. Uh, definitely A minus rated because power numbers off the chart. Look at that for Hogan. Uh, very good in contact, probably above mid range. Mid range and speed, exceptional with fielding and exceptional with the arm. So that is why Hogan is an A minus rated player. She can also play third base, which is really good for these Feta Flamers. Um, that's, you know, two big bats right up front, top third of your lineup there with Bobbert and Hogan. Uh, two good power hitters. And let's see, Alfredo West, not so much of a power hitter, your traditional uh, power hitter spot in the cleanup spot, but definitely a contact hitter. Uh, somebody with speed too. So somebody that, you know, these folks maybe hit a couple of doubles or something like that, a couple extra base hits, and you got Bobber to, to drive them in. So 
that's looking really good there for the Flamers. Uh, B plus rated Bob, uh, B plus rated uh, Alfredo West here um, as well has no secondary position, which is actually surprising. I don't know if I've ever seen that before <laughs> in Cheese League Baseball. Um, a player without a secondary position, so really, really stick into that one position. Very good in terms of fielding, not so much in the arm, so maybe, you know, turning double plays might be a little tough, uh, but nonetheless should be an, uh, an outstanding fielder there for your Feta Flamers second baseman. Everly Harris, your B-rated uh, third baseman here, uh, secondary position is of course first base, happens a lot. Uh, pretty good on contact, above average for sure. Definitely above average on speed, mid-range on power. Um, and then fielding and arm are pretty mid-range as well for Harris. So uh, definitely a good number five hitter here. You know, once some of you can hit the, uh, hit the ball, get on base, maybe drive in those runs from West Hogan and Boberts uh, for sure. Uh, and then some of you speedy is really good. I'm actually surprised that uh, no one, with the exception of Price, has any additional stats. So that's pretty interesting. All right, Harlow Cray Cray, <laughs> which is just a fantastic name right off the bat. Uh, kudos to you guys at Metal Hit Software and Super Mega Baseball 3 for coming up with these fantastic names. Uh, Cray Cray is... <laughs> Uh, your B-rated center fielder, so really, really exceptional in terms of fielding. Very high on the fielding meter, very, very high on speed meter. That's great at your center field spot because this will be a player, you know, Craker will be able to uh, track down those balls, get to it in the gaps, in those alleys. Um, that's definitely something that you want. Doesn't have the strongest arm though, but you know, as long as you can track it down, that's really great. Uh, pretty decent, I say mid-range on power, not so much on contact, but that speed number makes up for it uh, in my book uh, as you're at your number six spot. Looking at the bottom third of the order, we have Emerly Lowe, um, B-rated player and pretty average-rated player to begin with. Whiffer is up there as an activated stat, um, and this is your DH spot, so... You can definitely see why this team is more balanced than the Aeroplanes, more balanced, definitely more balanced than the Bree Boomerangs lineup. Uh, Bree Boomerangs lineup was like just a bananas lineup that no team should ever, ever have. <laughs> um, but I'm also looking here, I think everyone bats righty too up until low, which is pretty interesting and, and including low, but you know, Maybe a little bit higher in the contact meter, uh, but again, a B-rated player. Tapia, Asaya Tapia, uh, higher on the power meter, so uh, power spot out of your number eight hitter. Uh, lower on contact, pretty mid-range, maybe above mid-range on speed and fielding. So that is your first baseman. And then there's the lone lefty in this lineup. It's Gertie Carter. Very good on speed, very good on fielding. Not so much on contact, maybe a little above average on power out of your left fielder. So that's good, 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 good out of your left field spot. You definitely want somebody, a solid fielder. But let's take a look at the rest of the roster and take a look at Brennan, Raskeller, Downtown, and Franco. So Raskeller is more of a contact hitter. That's good. Very, very high in the contact meter, actually. I'm actually surprised that Raskeller wouldn't be in the starting lineup for the Flamers, but I have a suspicion that we'll be seeing Raskeller a lot, um, filling in a lot, especially for Carter, who, uh, not Carter, um, not maybe for Carter, but Maybe filling in in that DH spot. I don't know. I just feel I feel like Raskeller is actually might be a better player, but um, we will we will see. Brennan, definitely a big speed guy, so good speed off the bench. Very good in terms of fielding and arm as well. Downtown, uh, downtown is RBI man activated, which is a really really great stat. 
not a lot of stats in this team. Not, you know, not a lot of traits activated for these players. Again, you can see why it's more of a balanced team. Um, and then Franco, very high in the speed meter. So good news for this team. Good news for the Feta Flamers and good news for Flamers fans out there. You got a pretty speedy team here. You have Cray Cray and Carter. And then out of the bench, you got Brennan and you have Franco, who are very speedy. I'll throw Alfredo West up there as well. Very, very speedy team. So, you know, not, I, I would say, pretty average in terms of the contact numbers with Hogan and Bobbert, you know, top rated players, but they're top rated players because of the, those power numbers. In terms of contact, we're really looking at West and Price um, and then Lowe and Harris. So, you know, you get those folks on base. And then even if you get Cray Cray Carter on base, you know, have them steal some bags, make things happen, maybe play a little bit of small ball. That might be the Flamers look uh, through the Winter League Challenge. So we will we'll see what that looks like for these Feta Flamers um, in terms of lineup. Definitely, definitely, definitely a more balanced lineup. Definitely a more balanced team so far. And that extends down into the rotation. As we look at the rotation, Benny Bernard, uh, your A-rating starter, four-seamer, curveball, slider, change. Very, very good in the accuracy meter. K-man activated, uh, pretty above average on velocity and junk as well. Um, definitely higher in the junk meter. You're throwing a lot of junk out there. Cardenas, um, B-plus with higher on junk, which is great because there's a lot of junk out there. Not as high on velocity, which is surprising for somebody who throws four-seamer and a two-seamer. Uh, but throwing screwball out there, too. A lot of screwballers in the Winter League, which is pretty interesting. That's good. Composed activated, so we might see accuracy numbers down. Might see some walks. Um, you know, as a screwballer, that's that can happen. <laughs> um, for Avelos, uh, we have another forkballer. Actually, two forkballers in this rotation, which is pretty interesting. Um, which is a mid-range uh, for Avelos, and again for Bale too. Bale's B minus, your your fourth starter, also kind of a long man. Um, K dot activated there, um, so definitely a more balanced rotation here for the Flamers. Um, you know, folks throwing a lot of junk out there. Your it's interesting. Uh, Bale is your your highest rated. Uh, in terms of velocity and your starting rotation is also a K-dud. So that's pretty interesting. Um, it's also lefty though. That's good. Um, not a lot of lefties so far that we've seen between uh, the aeroplanes and definitely not on the boomerangs. Boomerangs did not have, I think they only have one lefty in the rotation whatsoever. Um, and I actually the rotation, between the rotation and the bullpen, so all their pitching. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, now when you look into the Flamers bullpen, Things get a little dicey uh, for you Flamers fans out there. Uh, regulation, B minus rated reliever. Uh, doesn't throw a lot. Uh, you know, only throws four seamer, two seamer, and a slider. Exceptional on the junk meter, so maybe a lot more sliders out there than those high velocity sliders, or uh, high velocity four seamers and two seamers. Definitely not the most accurate pitcher either. So if if the Flamers face off at some point against those three boomerangs, those contact hitting boomerangs will just tee off on regulation, especially if it's mid-range, below mid-range fastballs. Um, Taverna, actually Preston Taverna is uh, your reliever. It's a little bit more uh, on the velocity side, which is good, very low in the accuracy meter. And same thing goes to Tired Head, Remy Tired Head. Um, very, very low on the accuracy meter, a little bit higher in junk, and a little bit better on the velocity meter, too. So, pretty darn interesting uh, in terms of the bullpen. And the only reliever who is a lefty, actually, I don't have any relievers who are lefties, with the exception, I guess, Bailey can count as a reliever. Um, then Isaac Espinoza is in there as a B minus rated closer. Uh, sports the four-seamer curveball and a slider above mid-range uh, on junk, but definitely your velocity pitcher there. So expect lots of fastballs and then finish you off with the hook or finish you off with the slider. That's what I would expect. Uh, and that's a lefty too, so that's 
pretty good. I think that's actually our second lefty uh, closer so far. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Take a look here at the cards. I, like, like I said, you can definitely see why the, the Flamers are a bit more of a balanced team. Um, up and down that lineup, which is a lot more balanced. You know, even when you look at the bullpen and the rotation, pretty evenly balanced team in terms of, you know, you look purely at the stat numbers, very evenly balanced team. Um, maybe a little less so, I would say, in the bullpen, but um, definitely the lineup's very balanced, for sure. So, Flamers fans, these are your players. Take a look at them. I know I'm blocking Espinosa down here. I apologize, but take a look at these folks. These are your Feta Flamers. If you're a Feta fan, a Feta head, uh, yeah, these will be the folks that you'll be rooting for. Holly Cray Cray, or Har Harlow Cray Cray, Gertie Carter. Actually, this team may have. This team actually may have the most female players that we've seen. That is pretty interesting. Their their lineup is packed with female players. That is pretty darn cool. Pitchers, not so much, but their lineup definitely is. Let's go back to our visuals. And there they are, the Feta Flamers, folks. So if you're going to be a Feta head, that's the team that you'll be rooting for. Again, a balanced team, but anything can happen in baseball. We'll see what happens. Red Rock Ballpark's a fun, fun, fun ballpark, too. Um, we didn't play there in Cheese League. I tried to pick some parks that we didn't play at, but uh, that's a fun ballpark. I really, really enjoy that one. I think that one actually is like a dome too, which is, uh, or has a retractable sides and stuff. You can play like indoors, outdoors. It's pretty, pretty interesting. I love how they did that in Super Mega Baseball 3. But nonetheless, uh, thank you so much for watching. That's your overview of the Feather Flamers here in the Winter League Challenge Team. Uh, if you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up and also be sure to you know, go back and watch all of those Cheese League uh, games. Uh, they're all there on our YouTube channel. Uh, sure to like us on, or follow us rather, <laughs> on uh, Twitter at geek underscore cheese and follow our second channel to Twitter, uh, twitch.tv slash geek cheese. That's where we play other games and other things. All right, folks, we will see you next time with more Winter League Challenge teams. Take care. Bye.